being a new perspective within the body of Christ and his saints here. How we look at our lives, how we view God, and also how we use our gifts to impact and advance the kingdom of God. So, the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, it's, it, it, it talks about how Jesus had come back. He was resurrected. And, and in this particular verse and preceding verses, Jesus had sat with the disciples and they were interrogating Jesus. Jesus, when is the kingdom of God going to be restored? What, you know, what, what, what's going to happen? And Jesus told them very directly, this is not for the time or seasons that you should know. But verse 3 and 5, it, it really summarizes what I really want to talk about today. Verses 3, it says, after his suffering, Jesus, he presented himself to them, and he gave them many convincing proofs that he was alive. And he appeared to them over a period of 40 days, and he spoke about the kingdom of God. And verse 4 says, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. In verse 5, for John baptized with water, but in a few days, somebody say a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I'm going to stop right there. I just want you just to look at just one person and, and, and just tell them this. Neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. Don't, stress. don't stress, wait it out. Don't, don't, don't stress. Wait it out. And what Jesus was, was trying to, he was trying to tell him, listen, you, 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 you focus on the wrong things right now. You, you focus on things that you don't have no control over. But the one thing you do need to do is stay in Jerusalem. Hang around there. Stay in the high place. And when you go back to that high place, something's going to happen. I promise you, you don't have to worry about me. I'm going to sit at the right hand of the Father. You don't have to worry about me. I'm, 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 I'm here with you right now. You don't have to worry about me. I'm going to be fine. But in essence, what his message to them was, don't stress. Just wait. Wait it out. And in a few days, you're going to get something. The book of Acts, as, as many of you know, it, 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 the book of Acts is actually, it is a continuation of the gospel of Luke. Um, it is not included in the, what we know as the synoptic gospels, but it is a continuation. It is written by the same person who we deem as, as we talk and as we uh, uh, consider, I'll put a handle on him, Dr. Luke, yeah. because Luke was a physician. And in this particular book, again, Luke, he uh, expounds on the works of Jesus Christ, but he also expands on the work of the church, the apostolic church. Yeah in the book of Acts. And I think I got some apostolic saints in here today. <laughs> and just, just in case you don't know, we are an apostolic Pentecostal church. <laughs> hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And, and what, 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 what Luke was, was sharing in, this, in these chapters here, he was literally saying, listen, wait. There are some things that going to happen because of my resurrection. That's what Jesus was telling them. You know, there's going to be a lot of things set in motion, and uh, there's going to be a sequence of events that must occur, but you have to go to a specific place. And what Jesus was telling them was, and this is my first observation, 
Jesus was literally telling, that, telling them, them that waiting is going to prepare your mind. And that's the first observation. Waiting, it will prepare your mind. It will prepare your mind. He was trying to tell them, listen, again, there's some things you, 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 you don't have to worry about. There's some things that you don't have to worry about because God, my Father, has these things in order. He has these things prepared. He has these things uh, uh, already established. But you, apostles, you, disciples, because there were apostles and disciples in the upper room, and there were some other people that were just hanging around uh, that also caught not caught the Holy Ghost, <laughs> but they caught the vision, I will say. I, I'll say it said that way. They received the Holy Ghost just because they were hanging around. <laughs> and if you keep hanging around, you're going to get some power. Hallelujah. You're going to get a greater manifestation. And, and, and what Jesus was telling them, listen, listen, you know, what you need to do is go wait for the promise because when you wait, something is going to be revealed. And what he was telling them was, what you need to begin to do is prepare your mind to allow Holy Spirit to be the guiding factor for what you do from now until. And that's what Jesus was telling them. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm sending something to you. I'm sending you help. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. Holy Spirit is our paraclete. That's the Greek word. The help. He walks, uh, he walks beside us. He's in us. He's around us. We can't lose when you submit. Because you know what? We got a will. And some of us in here, we got some strong wills. And some of them strong wills, they get us into trouble. Oh, glory to God. I see some faces right now. Y'all say, yeah, why are you talking about my will, Pastor Matt? Because God told me to. <laughs> but y'all, some of y'all know we got some strong will. But what Jesus was listening, he was telling them, listen, wait a minute. Allow Holy Spirit, the spirit that I'm going to send, the spirit that's going to manifest when you get on one accord, when you assemble in that place, allow the spirit of God to be that thing that guides you. And I, would just, I just want to encourage us, continue throughout these seasons of our lives, yeah. where you, wherever you are. Don't stress about, even, in, even going into the season, don't y'all go, in no, go, go into no whole lot of debt trying to get Christmas presents because I was, just, I was listening to the news and they were saying, you know, this news report, they were saying, you know, people went into debt last year and they're still in debt. I said, the devil is a liar. I ain't going in no debt. Hallelujah. No, don't y'all stress about what you can't get. And don't, don't you let your children worry you about what you're not going to be able to get for them this year. That's for some parents. And don't you stress about trying to keep up with the Joneses. Hallelujah. Ooh, I had a note right there. I feel like. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't stress. Glory to God. And then this, as, we, as, as Jesus was teaching them, and I, I was trying to just imagine how they were um, feeling at the time. And I, I think they probably had some mixed feelings like a lot of us probably have sometimes. Here Jesus died. He rose again. But he, was, he told them, listen, I got to go away. But I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send help. But in the midst of that, his attention, he had to leave. But he said, I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit. But the, here's the thing, they were used to Jesus. They were used to seeing him. They were used to, used to him, they were used to interacting with Jesus. They were used to a norm. And you know, y'all know how it is sometimes when your norm is messed up and nobody likes change. Y'all come in here, y'all sit right in the same, almost same seats almost every Sunday. That's why I told the usher, I said, stop sitting them over there. Tell them to move over. Because I wanted y'all to change y'all mindset. I need y'all to start making room for the new saints. Ooh, I'm shouting about my, all by myself on that one. Mm. I got a quickening on the inside. It's a mindset, Shiloh. Shut up, Baba. I felt that. You got to change to make room. Sometimes for what you, what you don't even see yet. 
I'm not going to mess with y'all this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. I just got excited over that one point right there. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got to change, Shiloh. That's what God is saying to us today. Change your mindset about what's normal. Because you know what God wants to do? He wants to do the supernatural in here. He, he does not just want to do the normal thing. He wants to exceed what we see, what we experience. And the tension, again, with the, with the apostles and the, 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 the disciples, they were probably like, wow, Jesus, why you got to go? Why you got to leave? We don't want you to leave. And even when he did depart, they were standing, gazing in the air. They were gazing. Jesus is leaving. He's leaving us. I can't believe he's leaving us. But they forgot. I'm sending help. It's not what you expect. But I'm sending help. The help that he was sending them was to empower them. To fortify them for what was ahead. That's what God is doing, I believe, in, even in these closing months of this year. He's sending help to fortify us. He's sending help to settle us down so that we can embrace the change and the changes and the shifts. Somebody say shifts. Because God is shifting some things. Ooh, he's shifting some things in our lives. He's shifting some things in your houses. My God from Zion. He is shifting some things. And it's all about us preparing with a proper mindset. And what Jesus was telling them, listen, Paul picked it up in Romans 12, verse 2. And, and Paul was talking to the, the church there. He would say, listen, you, 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 you're used to norms. You're used to things being one way. But Paul picked it up in Romans 12. He said, listen, don't be conformed to this world. I got to read it in the Amplified. He said, don't be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. And see, there was a lot of superficial, superficial uh, customs and values that were even going on when Jesus was, on, was in the earth. But Paul picked it up in Romans. He said Super, superficial values, but be transformed. Somebody say transform. And the Amplified says, and progressively change mm. as you mature spiritually. And that's what God is doing in the church. That's what God is doing in Shiloh. He is progressively changing us to not conform to the norms of, of what we see around us. And it's so easy to integrate our lives into the norms and adopt the norms of what culture says. But it's time for us to challenge the norms. Ooh, it got quiet on that point. Glory to God. That, that word transform, it literally means metamorphosis. And meta, metamorphosis is, is a change from the inside, inside out. It's going to happen on the inside before it manifests. That's why you can't allow people who knew you in your old life try to keep you in a box. They don't know what, what, what and where you are right now. And you don't have to try to conform to what they think you are. I'm talking about everybody right now. You don't have to try to, try to, try to, try to I change. No, you ain't got to say nothing. Just be. You ain't got to fuss with people. You ain't got to fuss with nobody. I'm spitting. <laughs> you ain't got to fuss with nobody. You don't have to strive with nobody. You don't have to get in contentious fights with nobody. Just be who you are. Allow Holy Spirit to change you from the inside out. Glory to God. Paul goes on to say, by the renewing of your mind, mm, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. That's what we need to do. That's all about, that's all a part of the, the transformation of our mind and how we need to wait in his presence. Be transformed by the re renewing of your mind by focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And it 
impact, and, and, and what happens is, it's all related to the way that we wait, how we, how we sit in God's presence. And waiting doesn't necessarily mean being stagnant. It doesn't mean not being progressive, but waiting can mean preparing. It can, it can be, mean that you, you're moving within and through your transitions. Because as you move through your transitions, you're still waiting, but you're still moving. Transition is fluid. Okay? So as you wait for God to renew your mind, as you wait in God's presence, God will continue to prepare your mind. The second observation that I want to share is waiting will allow you to mobilize. It will allow you to mobilize. And that's what Jesus was telling them. Listen, you got to begin to mobilize. You got to begin to get your plan of action. Because again, you, it just, just in case, I'll just give you just a little short teaching here. What happened was there was transition before manifestation. And Jesus told them, listen, you got to go to this place. But in the midst of the story, the apostles had to um, replace Judas. And the reason why they had to replace Judas because Judas, <laughs> he died because of his disobedience. And of course, he betrayed Jesus. It was a part of, the, it was a part of God's the plan and the purpose. But they had to choose a replacement. And the replacement was Matthias, I believe. And, 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 and here's the thing. As they went through this time of transition and mobilizing, what God was literally teaching them was how to deal with and how to make hard decisions. He was teaching them to make hard decisions, but they had to do it together. They had to be organized. They had to be um, in one accord, if you will. They had to be together. They had to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, even before it manifested. And they dealt with, and, I'm, and, I, and, and I'm going to pause here too. They dealt with, and I know they did, but the Bible is explicit, but it's also implicit. But that means there's some things that are implied. When you think about interpersonal relationships, I believe that they also had to deal with some interpersonal struggles. And as I'm preparing us, as God is leading me to prepare us for, for next level ministry, we must continue to deal with interpersonal struggles Amen. in a healthy manner. Amen. I ain't get too many amens right there. Let me just put put Parkway. I'm gonna put a put my put. Uh, I'm gonna put a quarter here for just a minute. And I don't know. I might not hoop today, but I just want to deal with this one second. As we mobilize as a church, there are some things that we cannot take into a new decade. There's some old stuff and residues that we got to address in some of our relationships. Some of us been walking around tiptoeing around each other and mad because we don't even know why we're mad. God is saying, it's time for that to stop. How in the devil you going to make room and you dealing with this, but we're trying to reach the unsaved, but we ain't got it right here. Oh, this might not have been what you wanted to hear on the day. That, might, that, that wasn't in my notes. But there's some stuff we got to deal with as a people of God. Stop dancing around stuff and, and stuff that you done put in, up, in the, up in your heart. I mean, up in there. You done tuck. I mean, you done tuck. I'm gonna yeah, I'm going to show you what y'all doing. Yeah, I mean, you done tucked it up in there. You, and you're walking around with a wound. God said it's time to get rid of the wounds and deal with the stuff. Deal with the infections. Lay it on the altar. Go to your brother and your sister and say, I'm sorry. You know what? I did, I did such and such. That's right. Take ownership. I'm talking to the leaders right now. 
I ain't just talking about. I ain't just talking about to 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 to, to the. I'm talking to the leaders because it hits. It gotta start with the leaders. Oh, I know this is streaming, so let me get back here. If the leader's not right, the church is not gonna be right. I'm gonna rewind that one more time. Make sure y'all heard what I just said. If the leaders are not right, nobody else is gonna be right in this house. We got to have a standard of excellence. And it starts with the way we treat each other. We can't be walking around here not speaking to nobody, speaking to each other. We got to love everybody. I don't care who you are, what you done. We all got a past, but thank God we all got a future too. But we got to deal with the stuff here. How are we going to say we're going to heaven and we don't, and we can't, we can't embrace our brothers and our sisters. And you don't have to give them body slam either. Don't do it. Don't do it. Treat everybody right. Oh, that wasn't in my notes. I'm jumping into my leadership uh, stuff. God, guess what he wanted me to say it today, I guess. Mm. Ooh, let me f- figure out where I was. We got to begin to mobilize. We got to begin to mobilize for what is to come. You know, I'm gonna say this. I might get in trouble. <sighs> Listen, there are going to be people who come to our church, and maybe some people in here now, that are dealing with some internal stuff. But I mean some internal stuff, and I ain't got to go down the whole list, because some of y'all and us are dealing with some internal stuff. We cannot be judgmental. That's what Jesus was teaching them. We gotta deal with we gotta deal with us on our level, but we can't be judgmental. We can't be judgmental with each other, and we can't be judgmental with the sheep. Ooh, this was not the way I intended to go, y'all. There has to be a renewing of our minds. My God, from son, let me just you know what? Let me just walk this thing out. Because I can see how this is going to go. Oh, I got some time. He was telling them, deal with the stuff. Deal with the stuff on this level. When you deal with the stuff on this level, you can move forward. Yeah. And maybe that's one of the reasons why you can't move forward right now in your life. Because you've been, you have not dealt with the stuff on this level. Yeah. Deal with the hard stuff. You know what? And this is the couples as well. And I say this in, in counseling all the time. Never leave the, 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 the door open to assumptions. Right. 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 Pastor, Pastor C will, will, will ditto this. Over-communicate. Don't assume that your spouse knows what you're thinking. And I'm going to go to the next step. Never assume that your brothers and sisters know what you're thinking. If you feel like Holy Ghost would talk to you, he would say, you know what? You need to go s- just speak to them. Say, how you doing? You know, gain entrance. And sometimes it, that first step will be the thing that will bring healing and restoration to re- relationships. Hallelujah to God. God. God does not want us to bring baggage into a new ca- decade. He doesn't want us to bring old residue. Yeah, there's go- always going to be something because we go from glory to glory to glory. But when we know and we are aware of things that we can deal with on this level, we have a responsibility to, to renew our minds and do something about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Let me just move on. Hallelujah. This wasn't the way I was supposed to go, but anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. I guess this is what Holy Ghost is trying to say. <laughs> Ooh, let me just go on to the last observation because um, 
I'll deal with the other stuff some other time. The God, that's what God wanted to say in that point. So you know what? I'm going to move on. <laughs> Hallelujah. The last observation I, that I need to share today is that not only, let me just give you a recap. Waiting will prepare your mind. Waiting will allow you to mobilize. But you know what else waiting will do? Waiting will improve your outlook about what to expect. Waiting, when you, write with, when you wait with the right attitude, it will improve your outlook about what to expect next. And this was what Jesus, again, was doing in, 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 in this text, in these verses, in these early chapters of the book of Acts. Jesus was working with them. He was working with them over a period of about 50 days, uh, 40, 40 to 50 days. And what he was doing, he was preparing them. He was trying to get them to change their perspective about themselves, about the work that they were about to do, and the things that uh, they were about to encounter. And they, as they went through this process of improving their outlook about what to expect, they had all the proof through Jesus Christ, because Jesus, again, remember, he died, but he rose, and then he was walking along with them. He was still preparing them. And see, and, and during this time, this was their verifiable proof, proof that number one, he was alive, and that they had to continue to trust the process. And that's what, that's what Jesus was doing. He was, listen, he was saying, listen, there's some things that got to happen. There's some things that have to happen. There's some hard choices that you're going to have to make. There's some things that we got to deal with on this, on this level. But he said, listen, you got to trust the process. You have to trust the process of waiting. And I don't know who this word is for on today. Some of you in here need to trust the process of waiting. You can't rush it. You got to wait. You got to develop a strategy. You got to get your mindset. You got to mobilize yourself, deal with stuff on this level, deal with internal stuff, deal with external stuff. Deal with it. And that's what Jesus was saying. Listen, you got all the proof that you need that I'm here. You can't get no better than this. I'm here. (laughs) You got verifiable proof that I'm alive, but you got to trust the process when I leave. When I leave, there's some things that you got to do. When I leave, you must change the outlook about what is ahead of you. And what Jesus was developing within them, he was developing them another level, another level of faith. He was developing in them another level to trust the God and the Holy Spirit that was within them. And that's what God, I believe, is doing in these closing weeks. Again, God is saying, trust the process. Wait on me. Your outlook is about to change, but do not make hasty moves. Deal with what you got to deal with. Give attention. Feed what you need to feed. Feed yourself spiritually. Nourish yourself. Be transformed in my presence. But he's saying, listen, your outlook has to change. But the good news is, our outlook is changing. I, want, I just want you to look at just one person. Just tell them that your outlook is changing. Your outlook is changing because you waited. Your outlook is changing because you are now, you have a new determination. Your outlook is changing because you have a new perspective about God. God is, a, he is strengthening you in the process. And that's what God is doing for many of us. God is strengthening strengthening us while we wait. He's strengthening us in the process. He's giving us a renewed mind. He's settling some of us down because some of us, we're just all stressed out. We don't know what's going on. I'm stressed out. Calm down. Get in his presence. Pray again. Allow the Holy Spirit to settle you down. Allow Holy Spirit just to, to, to just permeate your space. And some of you need to just go home and clean out some space. 
and, 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 and make a holy place, make, make a, a, a dedicated area where you know you can touch the heart of God. Hallelujah to God. Woo, my, 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 my. I'm going to just stop right there because, you know, one thing I'm learning is I can't give it all at one time. I'm going to let the word settle. But just look at one person and say, don't stress. Just wait.